ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week 25 of the It Doesn't Matter podcast, and we've got myself, John, and we've got... <laughs> Holy smokes, and we've got... Cool Ray. Cool Ray, and we've got... I am the notorious one, I am dumb. Boom! All right, we're trying a little bit uh, of a different thing here this week, but uh, for first-time viewers or those that don't know us, my name is John Lee, and I've been a pro wrestling fan f since uh, late 1995. I got into it, honestly, because um, the, the kids in school liked it, and you, know, you want to be popular with the kids in school, so that's why I started getting into it, and of course I fell in love with it, and I've been following it ever since. Abel, how about you, my friend? Uh, came from birth, man. First thing we ever watched was wrestling. Something about Hispanics with Lucha Libre. Love it all. Come on, man. He was watching Lucha Libre out from the womb. Damn right. <laughs> with the mask on. Damn like right. Like Andrade. <laughs> no shirt on and a towel around your neck. Nacho Libre. Oh, yes. Oh, my Lord. word. Oh, Lord. Yeah, we had, we had some good shit, though. I ain't gonna lie. Different cultures, different personalities. So it was worth it. Ray, how'd you get into pro wrestling as a wow. fan? So it all started, like, I used to just watch it when I was young with my grandfather. He really got me into it. So what he did, he had a whole bunch of st st stupid family threw away. The bunch of old tapes, like I'm talking about from the territory days, that he used to just have, and he used to just watch. That was his thing. Um, he used to fix VCRs, how funny that is, and but he used to just, and then to, to try them out, he used to do wrestling tapes, and we used to sit in the room. And just watch all these old tapes from different territories. And then it got me right into wrestling. Got me right into... So I would say around um, 89, 90 is when I really started being a hardcore fan. Hmm. Almost almost lifelong, so... Almost, yeah. Almost. Dom, how about you? How'd you get into being a fan of wrestling? And as for me, I became a fan just like Ray. Watching with his grandfather did the same thing. Went to my grandparents' house every weekend. And 6.05 Saturday night, you watch WCW. Hell, they even have a, what, 9.05 show in the morning on TBS. So I used to watch that, too. So I used to watch all that. And then my mom used to work third shift. So while she was getting ready for work, I used to watch Monday Night Raw and WCW Monday Night Raw. I was a diehard fan. It, was, it is what it is. That's... Always been my love. That's my passion right there. And that is the passion. You know, we're four friends, and we have uh, four different personalities, four different ways of uh, becoming fans of professional wrestling. But the uh, one of the most important things about us is that, you know, we came up from the same town. We have the same love, one love, and that is professional wrestling. And that is us here on the It Doesn't Matter podcast. And as a matter of fact, what does even the name It Doesn't Matter podcast even mean? Like, Ray, do you have any idea what the name came from? Because you helped invent it. <laughs> yeah, you did. It doesn't matter. Uh, well, it for, matter. For, <laughs> for, for, during week two of our show, because this is week 25, week two of the show, Ray was uh, our guest and uh, semi-permanent fixture on the show. Yeah. And we were just, before we were recording, we were just throwing out... We didn't have a name of the show yet. Right. We really didn't have one. Um, things were bandied about but we didn't choose one and we're just joking around saying like oh you know who's gonna watch our show who's gonna care about our show it's like who's gonna watch our show it doesn't matter. it doesn't matter do you like wrestling it doesn't matter <laughs> do you care who we are it doesn't matter do is, you... it, is wrestling fake it shut up doesn't matter <laughs> you know it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter does this feel fake <laughs> why'd you slap your thigh you, that's, that, that's what she said that was fake you know, so so it you know it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter <laughs> who you were, what you were. If you liked us, you knew who we were, knew what we were talking about. It doesn't matter, and it helps that it doesn't matter is one of the most popular catchphrases from one of the most famous pro wrestlers and superstars in wrestling and Hollywood, the most electrifying man in all entertainment. My father. You wish. Yeah, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. So. That's the name of the show. It doesn't matter podcast. It's a great phrase from the People's Champion, The Rock, and we're, this is a pro wrestling podcast. So that's who we are. That's what we are, and that's what we do. And uh, if y'all don't like it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Aww, a lot of build up. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, but this week's topic is something very uh, special in the world of uh, pro wrestling. It's a SummerSlam coming up, and we've got a little prediction show coming up. So Dom. What do we have to predict? What's the lineup? SummerSlam is coming up next week in Detroit, Michigan. Ooh. 
We got some star-studded matches right here. It's in the stadium, right? Ford Field, Ford home Ford of the Field. Detroit Lions. There's finally going to be some winners in there. Maybe a new champion. Well, you, not the Lions. That, the wow. Lions are predicted to win. Oh, you're not going They're to not going to win the NFC North. I bet you they do. I bet you they won't. The Vikings got that division locked. I bet you they don't. Well, Ooh. that's for another time. <laughs> we'll do that another time. Because it doesn't matter. This is a wrestling podcast. This is what we're going to do. So we know Logan Paul's brother has a match that night somewhere <laughs> in Texas. So they're going to be kicking off the show. So I think they're going to confirm that. So it's going to be Ricochet and Logan Paul. Uncle Ray, who do you have? I have Logan. The Wolverine. The Wolverine. You're picking <laughs> Are you taking Wolverine? No, I, I think Ricochet gets his loss. I mean, it, um, Paul needs his win. He's going to get his signature win. I mean, he's been putting on... Not to be cliche or be funny, but banger after banger. Like, every match he's been in has been... He's he's good. He's a natural. Yeah. In my right now, I'm gonna say this. Right now, he's my favorite. I'll, I'm gonna say a wrestler to watch. He is. I like. I just like. He just. He gets it. The the mannerisms. The the I want to punch his face. The the cockiness. The athleticism. Shawn Michaels. If that if that's him, that kudos to you because you put on a. You, you created a gem. See. And, I, and, I, and he has the star power. You know what I mean? He's he's actually known more than anybody else on this show. Like, See, you weren't here a few it. weeks ago, a couple episodes ago. I said that Ricochet needs to be Logan Paul. Yeah. That's why he can't get over right now. He doesn't have right the now. personality. That's the problem. He has the look. That's the he problem. Has the he has everything that Logan Paul has, but he can't personal. talk. No personality. No talk is... That's the he's problem. Like, you know what, homie? Let me tell you something. Bro, I, you I can say, just oh scream, God. script, script, like, script. Just, like, Prince Puma had more personality than Ricochet. Yep. Maybe he had a mask on. Do you think this this match in particular, like really this match, Logan Paul and Ricochet is, is a prime example of uh, an imitation being better than the original? Yeah. Basically. It is. Which is kind of sad. I mean, the, I, he, I, I, I would, I would, no? I would know because we're not gonna, I'm not going to take away from Ricochet and what he does in the ring. Because you know, no one really we're does We're talking what he about does. earring, but we're talking about a whole but pure, a total package. Total, yeah, you want a guy but that can I, I, I wrestle say the ring he's and a, also per se sell. imitation of any like he just he's missing that one thing that would put him over the edge until he gets that one thing. Maybe he gets a mouthpiece later on. Or he's he's never going to get well, a mouthpiece. There's only, one, there's only one mouthpiece in WWE, and that's Paul Heyman. And he's yeah, not and getting that. That will make no sense. Exactly. In the world. No. They, 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 no, maybe, maybe, maybe he goes with the lashes. Looks like he's doing a little. Little, little business, that could do something for him, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, fucking Ricochet need the wardrobe change. That damn shirt he had you know with the saying? Wakanda necklace. Yeah. Oh, well, that, that shit was terrible. That's, that's Prince Puma. That's, that's coming back. That's, that's terrible. I know a shark we eat shit. No, it's, it's an African piece. <laughs> Look like yeah. shark teeth. Oh, Lord Jesus. Sharks are very popular in Paducah, no, but, Kentucky. No, uh, I think, I think Logan, <laughs> Logan's like, I don't know. I just, I, I like him, man. John, I told you about him. You you said you weren't totally sold on him. I said, listen, yeah. he's not bad. No, he's, he's good. Doing, he's, he's very doing good. Very, he's doing well. He almost got killed and he, st- he took it like a champ. <laughs> yeah, he did. That was... Ooh. He almost didn't make <laughs> it out of there. You're coming with me whether yeah. you like it or not. Oof. I, I, let's see what happens. They're gonna, I know they're going to try to do something crazy because... That's what it's going to do, but let's see. Hopefully they get out of there alive. There, there's no doubt that they are going to do something crazy, but will they be successful at being safe while they do something crazy? Because they did that at Money in the Bank, and it was just terrifying. It takes you out of the element, because then you start worrying about the, the real, genuine health of the, the athletes. Um, but for Ricochet, Logan Paul, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't see why not, why Logan Paul would not get the victory. Um, just... It's, it's unfortunately it's only Ricochet, so you know Ricochet can recover, and he's not a super high profile guy, so I might as well just give it to Logan Paul, and maybe uh, they'll segue that into another program, perhaps tag team champions Ricochet and Logan Paul in the oh future. Oh my God, they'll do that's a WWE oh. <laughs> thing, and why do you have to say that? We're John? tugging on Abel's uh, heartstrings with the <sighs> random tag team partners. Winning the championship. Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen, too. It'll be one hell of a match, though. It will, but Jesus Christ. Eh. I don't want to see that, but it's going to happen. Thank you, John. You think so? Thank you. You're welcome! Yeah. <laughs> it's thank you! Happen. That's a thank you, John. <laughs> that's exactly what's probably going to happen. Oh, good job. Great match. Let's play. Let's be tag team. 
Give me the golf clap. <sighs> and only the golf clap. No, that, that, I mean, we're going to have to be here. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I got to go with Logan Paul, to be honest. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ricochet, yeah. your promo's trash. Sorry. I do You're my talking wrestler. in the ring. This isn't heels. As he did a flip <laughs> outside the ring. Not as, not as memorable yeah, as the like, Velveteen Dream version of yeah. that. I think I think Velveteen just played it better than Logan. I mean, you could tell that Logan was just he. The glasses thing was funny, but Velveteen <laughs> I, Velveteen was so good, man. I, I know. Jesus, Too Velveteen many. was so good at being bad. Oh, That's what the boys man, said. The one. Like Kurt, <laughs> like <playing with> little <laughs> boys. <laughs> oh wait, hold on, hold on. I know what you meant. <laughs> Rey Mysterio, you're a boy. And I don't like, to, like, to play like playing with boys. <laughs> Wait a minute. Dom, what you got? You got a prediction for Logan Paul? I said it a few weeks ago. It was going to be Logan Paul. Mm. He needs a win. This man been losing every time since he's been here. So it's time for Logan Paul. Do you think go. they keep going with that kind of storyline where, hey, listen, he's not getting a win? No. No? No. That man getting paid too much money to keep losing matches. No. Yeah, he's, he's got to get one. Not, yeah. No, he don't need it, but... Yeah, he don't care. It, you paid too much money. You just well, said. What are you going to do with Ricochet? Thank you. Could you. Do, you could do something. Thank you! North American Championship, baby! Mm-hmm. That's Dom. That's, that's Dom. Yeah, right there. Right. Leave that alone. All right, let's get to the IC title. We have Gunther versus Drew McIntyre. Right. Is Drew finally going to get his time to the shine? Actually, you already shine, but is Gunther going to get a pin? Is he going to get pinned? That's the question. Yeah. My opinion, no. It's going to be a knockout drag out, but Gunther's going to pull it out no matter what. That dude's he's on another level, man. He is. That is the workhorse champion. There's no way you're going to stop him right now. He's so close to breaking Honky Talk's title. Uh, Rain, I think they'll give it to him and then say, all right, we got something next for you. Seth freaking Rollins. Drew and Seth? Gunther? Actually, maybe. We've already seen that. Yeah. Gunther and uh, Seth? Yeah, we've seen them before. We did? I think when Drew was champ. I don't remember. Well, no one wants to remember uh, the Thunder Dome, Thunder Vision. Or the... <laughs> there you go. I don't remember what it's called. What is it called? What is it called? Thunder Dome. Super Brawl Saturday? <laughs> the Thunder Dome. They said, keep smiling. I was like, yeah. <laughs> act like you're excited. I, there's no way you're going to tell me what to do if I'm watching the show. You have been away from the screen for too long. Not interested in that. <laughs> yeah. It was it was too much. It was telling me to do too much. I can't eat. <laughs> I hated that. Well, uh, Drew McIntyre and Guntar for the ice, uh, IC title. Um, for, first of all, it should be a great match. It should be a great match on the same level as uh, Sheamus and uh, Gunther was last year. And but who's going to win? I mean, Drew just came back. He, I guess he maybe he signed a new contract, and you would think that they would give him a big push, give him the reward, give him the championship. But Gunter is so valuable as the Intercontinental Champion as he is right now. I and being a big big fan of him right now, I just would not want to take the title off him. Not yet. Not at. I mean, SummerSlam is one of the big four shows, so. There's lots of good reasons to do it. There's lots of good reasons not to do it. But if I had to pick one right now, I would say Gunter somehow retains the title. I agree. What about the Ultimate Ray? What do you think about uh, the <laughs> Ultimate match? Ray? I agree with you. It's usually by history standards, behind the scenes, they sign a new contract. That means they want to push them. They usually give them a big win. Yeah. I agree with you that he doesn't need that big win against Gunter when... Gunther is doing well in his position because at, he loses it. What happens then? Then he go okay. I understand that. How can you put it into your mind that he goes after Seth? He just lost the IC match to you know what I mean. What did he want that, his belt back? Why would he? It doesn't make sense <clears throat> to me. So I, it, there is precedence in that though because this was 2004. Mm-hmm. It was uh, Vengeance Hartford Civic Center. Randy Orton lost the Intercontinental Title in a for its time lengthy title reign. He lost it to Edge at Vengeance in uh, July of 2004. And the very next month, what did he do? What did he do the very next month? He beat opponent for the World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam 2004. Benoit? Cool. Yes. 
Yes. So, <laughs> I, know exactly, I know exactly yeah. where he's going. So that that was an example. Like, oh my God, you know, you just, you know, Randy Orton could have could have had a longer championship with the Intercontinental title. It's like, why did they cut him so short? Why did they give it to Edge? And then one month later, you saw what happened. He they were gearing him up to win a bigger championship. So. That's why if either Gunther or Drew McIntyre loses, I can see the loser yeah. going on to Seth Rollins. Can I ask you a question? I agree. Just you? Yes. So, <laughs> do you... I, I like Gunther in the position he's in now, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you... Are you looking down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't is. see him as world champion. Don't I you? like yes. I, right now, I like him where he's at and what he's yeah. doing now. World Champion seems a little forced for me because now he. It just I don't know. You, you get what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Do you? I do. I do. 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 No, but I. That's why no, I'm Gert- saying that Gunther gets the win, but I don't think he gets it clean. Gunther, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Well, you think uh, you know, Imperium uh, interfere? Yeah. Imperium is going to interfere. Correct. I had is a disqualification. Well, uh, McIntyre gets his win. Yeah. And yeah. now McIntyre could actually go that world champ because he did get the win, technically. Right, yeah. And then he Seth can always do his got that you know open I mean? challenge. So and then it doesn't it doesn't not make sense because McIntyre did win the match and now he's going after the bigger one. You know your, what I mean? Your hand reached in. I lifted him up for ninety thousand, brother. This is so is you fun for our audio listeners. <laughs> Everyone got Gunther. Yes. All right, bring Gunther. Gunther. Ring no, I have oh. McIntyre. Oh, McIntyre, just right. not winning the belt. DQ. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So everybody has Gunther. <laughs> Gunther retaining, retaining the Intercontinental title. Exactly. Yes. yes. All righty. Our next match, we got Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. Strap facts, Mister Adequate, Mister Small Package. Who do you got? That's a small package. Where does this come from? Do you see it right? Do you see the small package? Ronda Rousey <laughs> and Shayna Baszler in a feud for the ages. Uh, Ronda Rousey, it's her uh, sunset match. She's allegedly going to leave. <laughs> She's allegedly going to leave the WWE after this match. So why would you have her win? And give the rub to Shayna Baszler. <laughs> so... To have a prediction, I would pick Shayna Baszler winning only because it benefits Shayna Baszler more to get the rub from uh, Ronda Rousey, get the RRR, and, uh, which is a great movie on Netflix, by the way. Check it out. And that's my prediction. Shayna Baszler winning the match at SummerSlam. Yeah, Shayna's definitely getting the rub from Ronda Rousey. <laughs> She'd love that. Aww. Ray, Ray, would you like to get the rub from Ronda Rousey, or would you like to give that to Shayna Baszler instead? She already flirted with me, Ronda. She knows exactly who I am. That is on my Instagram. So when she flirted with me, but no, I I agree with you wholeheartedly. It doesn't. Shayna gets more of the the benefit of winning this match, right? Yeah. Than Ronda would. Dumb. Shayna, it's her time. Her time yeah. to shine. It's her time. It's her time. All right. What's the next match at the right. SummerSlam preview All show? All right. We're gonna go with Oscar versus Charlotte versus Bianca Belair for the women's Ooh. title. Abel, who you got? <laughs> Nobody's ready for Asuka. Is that what she do? Yes. I don't know. She's all over the place. <laughs> it's interpretation. Look at that shirt. Look at that shirt. I got oh, Asuka. Look at that eye. Just. I want to kiss. Naito. No. <laughs> <laughs> she got a Naito eye. I love her eyes. Yes, she's. Ray love Oscar. It's a nice, yeah. it's a nice T-shirt you got there. So it is the Oscar shirt. Uh, we're, I guess you know, once we mention a T-shirt, we got to talk about the T-shirts. That's it. Dom, what you got for a T-shirt? Going I on? have the Demo Guy T-shirt. I have the Ayatollah Rockarola. I have the Lita Afazi. I have I am Jericho on Twitter. I have Chris Jericho, also known as Lionheart. <laughs> uh, right now, I've got a uh, Samoa Joe TNA Joe. shirt. <laughs> So, uh, twisted metal. I mean, it's a, it's a summer, it was a summer special. That's why they're all white t shirts. They had a bunch in this line. They had a Kurt Angle shirt. It just is kind of small in print. It had a little, and a Jeff Hardy shirt. So I have three of those. Thank you, Don West, for the, and, uh, RIP, for the brown bag specials. And thank uh, you. Thank you. thank you. Ray, what you got rocking going there? I have that, oh, that vintage 316. 
That old Stone Cold. Stone Cold. The comeback. Stone Cold. Sir. Stone Cold. He's here. He's back. It's Stone Cold. My God. Man, I wish that Ross would come back. Huh? Oh. That Jim Ross. I miss him. Well, if he had some circulation in his foot, oh. he'd get the energy back. You gotta, you know, build it up. He's, he's, he's got that hitting he's checked, the, the floor disease. Out. Yeah, he's checked out. Yeah, he's checked out. And knocked out. Did you see it? See his eye? Who'd he have collision with? The floor. Don't it go. All right. What's next on the SummerSlam prediction show, Dom? You ain't say who you got winning. What? You ain't say who he got winning for the yeah. last match. I got Oscars. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think about that match? Damn. Um, well, of course, big fans of all three of them, Oscar, Charlotte, and Bianca. They're all tremendous ring generals themselves. Um, Oscar being the women's champion, she doesn't seem like the focus of, you know, what a champion should be. Um, but I, I just, I just see her retaining and down the line, she's going to lose a title to one of those two and, uh, Bianca and Charlotte will have their face off at WrestleMania. Yeah, it looks That's like what it. I think. The whole, the real rivalries between Charlotte and Bian- Bianca, like, they're, yeah. they're, Oscar's just there just as a gatekeeper, like, eh. So, uh, Oscar's gonna retain somehow. Yes. So that's they're what gonna it's gonna be. Feud, she's gonna boom, boom, bust, bust all kick, done. All right. Right? I have, I, well, I can't go against the family friend. You right? could. No, I'm not going to. The queen <laughs> goes after her dad's record. So she retained. I mean, she um she captures the Damn. the belt and uh, she's going after her dad's record. And I think they're gonna make it a big thing where she beats it. It's gonna be her. She's not gonna. She's still got two more title rings. So. She's got Oscar's number. Well, oh, three actually. I think Charlotte comes out victorious at SummerSlam. Oof. And for me, I have Oscar retaining the title. I think. They're going to focus on Charlotte and Bianca too much. Them two are going to take each other out, and Asuka is just going to hit somebody with a miss and take advantage. That's going to be... But I still see Charlotte and Bianca at WrestleMania in Philadelphia. Ooh, I like that. I see that for the title. I do like that. All right. That's what I see. All right. So our next match is for your new World Heavyweight Championship. We have... Finn Balor, the Prince, versus Seth frickin' Rollins. Ray, I want to hear your take. Who do you got? I have... Damn it, man. That's what I want to I you have first. Finn winning with Priest leaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be really good. Okay. I, I, I can see that. Then the McIntyre thing makes sense. Because now he goes against the Judgment Day as a as a as a face. You can't. I, I don't think you're gonna have Seth, who is the second biggest baby face in the company, going after McIntyre, who they want to get there again. So that makes sense. Finn wins. Priest gets it. Then there's the Judgment Day thing, and then you throw in Mac. I, I, it just makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. So I'm going um, Finn winning, Priest leaving. Champ. All right, I like that. Abel, who you got? I got Seth winning, but I don't see the cash in right now. I don't. I I, I want to say I see it, but not not tonight. Well, not that night. Something about Seth holding that belt for a little bit longer. I just the Judgment Day is gonna implode, just not SummerSlam. Yeah, they're Raw and Albany. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> It's always on a fucking live show. <laughs> Sorry, I was having flashbacks to a previous show. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking cat <laughs> going to town on itself. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. John breaking K Fabe. I was right just now. looking over the cat. No, it was just rubbing on my leg and I tried to not, I, I tried to don't sell it. <laughs> and I wanted to, like, Mr. Jinx beat it. Mr. Jinx is getting the Ronda Rousey rub to itself. <laughs> Holy smokes. Um, Holy smokes. I just got sent so, by Abel's cat. Oh, Lord. Hey, 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 hey. So, <laughs> good. My, it, was no, it was so much room. Why didn't I rub my leg? She likes you guys. I, it was, no, she just likes All right. Okay. Get back on track. John, who you got? Seth right. Rollins or Finn Balor? Keep <laughs> 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 shirts coming. 
Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. Um, just think of good memories. So these two scenarios, I mean, the, the one where uh, Finn Balor wins the title and then Damian Priest cashes in on him, um, I think if, that, if Finn Balor does win the title, I think he could draw it out, that tension. Yes. I think that would be very uh, engaging to watch on Raw. Um, Damian still having the briefcase and Finn as the champion. Yeah. On, the sim- on a different end, you could have um, Seth retain... Damien cash in, and then you have Damien as a champion with Finn and that dynamic. Uh, it can also be a storyline on Raw for many weeks. Yeah, that could happen. And then if you have Seth retain, then then you go on to the next challenger or, or, or whatever. Um, uh, so there's many possibilities. So that's why it's a very interesting matchup to have. Uh, but if I had to pick a a winner, I you know I'm just gonna. Throw all my my thoughts thoughts and prayers behind Mr. Finn Balor. So my choice is Finn Balor to walk away the uh, new champion from out of SummerSlam. All right, and for me, I got Seth freaking Rollins retaining the title. I think it's gonna be a good match. Usually they say third time is a charm, but I don't think it's gonna happen to Finn Balor. I think Aww. Seth is gonna gonna do his thing, and there won't be a cash in. Might be a tease. But it won't be a cash in, no. and the Judgment Day will still be dominating WWE. Well, I'm just saying SummerSlam does have a cash in type of uh, history to it. Yeah. So anything can happen in the world of wrestling entertainment. Anything could happen in the world of wrestling entertainment. So anything can happen in the world of wrestling entertainment. <laughs> Abel, you might as well say it. <laughs> you might as well say it. Anything can happen in world wrestling entertainment. <laughs> Jeez. We're in a loop here. <laughs> all right, all right. It John. doesn't matter. John, here we go. This, this question is for you. The American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, <clears throat> or Brock <clears throat> Lesnar? <sighs> Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar, just like he said. Um, I, they're, they are one and one. Are they one and one right now? Yes. With the great one. <laughs> so it's a it's the rubber match. Um, I call it rubber match. I mean, you know, Brock Lesnar he's always has those rumors time. where where he's leaving or he's Safe. done, he's going to retire. But I don't know. Um, who knows what he's going to do? He can leave, say he's never going to come back, and guess what? He's going to come back. So uh, Cody Rhodes, uh, I'll pick Cody Rhodes because Cody Rhodes, you know, if they're interested in giving him the real long term push, have him win. Against Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Why the hell not? Abel? Yeah, I gotta go with Cody. Yeah. Finish the story. Finish the story. Finish the story. That's all I gotta say. Ray? One thing we can appreciate Brock, that he's always business first, and he's not selfish. He, If it makes sense for him, he's gonna do it. It doesn't make sense for him to win. It, does, it just doesn't do anything yeah. for anyone involved. It makes sense more for Cody... Now, the way Cody said it on Raw in his promo, maybe it is one of those convincing wins that we've seen Brock Lesnar be on the other end of, a la Goldberg or something like that. You know what I mean? Maybe it is one of those where it happens so fast and Brock just loses his whole shit because it just, like, where did this come from? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I can say about Brock, if it makes sense, he's with it, and it makes sense for Cody to come out victorious at SummerSlam. That's why Cody called him Mr. SummerSlam. I, I think Brock is a very, I mean, of course, he's a very intelligent person. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, working with Paul Heyman all those years, it, the intelligence just rubbed off on Brock Lesnar. Um, but just because Brock Lesnar thinks something, it doesn't mean he's going to push for it. He might have his opinions, and he might throw them if he really feels a certain way, but I feel like he, does, he just goes with whatever the booking is. God damn, I mean, pal. If, if, it's not, yeah, if it's not too well, terrible, he's not going to say anything. Didn't they, they have him... Winning against McIntyre, and he was like all gung ho against it when I read on yeah. Raja. Like yeah. he was like, "No, why am I winning? There's no reason for me to win." Yeah. And then they changed it at the last minute because he was like, "No, it doesn't, he almost oh, did the, the Stone Cold thing." Brock is best for business. Yes, to like save because it was the early pandemic to like save that. Right. Like win. he said, "Why am I winning? There's no reason." And maybe that's another thing. I, I agree with you. Maybe it's pandemic. He seen he foreshadowed like, "Why am I winning in a pandemic? No <laughs> I don't one want to be, be here." here. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, he doesn't want to be there. So that yeah. could be another. Thing. Just like so, another yeah. thing with Brock, I heard on <laughs> I forgot what podcast when the pandemic took place. He was like, 
why would you uh, have me keep wrestling during a pandemic and nobody's really watching? You know, it's like you wasting money towards me. Just, yeah, like, say yeah. that for later. Let me do my own thing. And, Guy's smart, man. Yeah, yeah. Brock, yeah. Brock knows the best for business. He, he, he went away for a while face. too, right? Just so yeah, yeah, that's when he grew his hair out and Guy's got the smart, beard. Man. Yeah, Guy, yeah. He, he's smart and he doesn't really care about he. Just, it's all about it's that, just, it's all about that bag, about yeah. He, he's about he's that about bag, and I respect him. Brock, about Brock is about his money. Brock is what's best for business right now. If it makes sense, it makes dollars, and, and that's I'm, what Brock is I'm all telling about. You, man, that Brock dude, wins, then what? Cody has another big loss. People are exactly. going to start turning on him. Yeah, like, exactly. Why am, I, why am I backing this loser? Go back to AEW. Exactly. Ooh, not going to happen. When you were the booker and you came and win the yeah, whole yeah, matches. No. <laughs> so it doesn't do it does, it does, yeah. You think you think it make one return before he's... Brock could lose, and the next and Monday come on and roll and challenge Seth, and no one's gonna bat an eye. That's true. Damn right. No that's one true. will bat. No one will be like, "How?" Right they were like, well, you, you know what? Brock. That's right. It's and Brock. Damn is like, no yeah. one will bat an eye if that ever happens. Speaking so of, so it's it's it doesn't make sense. Now you just opened up a scenario. Huh. Scenario. Brock can destroy fucking Seth, and then the cash in happens Monday night. Nah, because. Is in uh, the yeah. aren't really exactly. They're, on the, they're really. on a collision course. I was making a, a point where I know, if, if but Rock could, hey. Rock could lose and come out and just nah, like, he has that cane effect. That's a good scenario, but why the fuck I'm gonna let you cash in for? I'm gonna beat your ass too. You ain't cashing in. Yeah, it doesn't mean Brock's gonna be in the same area once he's. Come but why in, did he come slide out? In. Yeah. Why did he come out and do it in the first place? He's just sick of his shit. He probably said, "Oh, open challenge. Mm-hmm. Fuck it." Brock does what he wants. That's what I'm saying. That's why I got Cody. I almost got it. I almost got it before I hit your face, buddy. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Pause. All right, now for me, I have... Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I have Cody Rhodes winning as well. It's yeah. it's Cody's time. Like Abel said, he needs to finish the story, but what's the next chapter? After Cody beats Brock Lesnar. And they're going to keep Cody Rhodes away from Roman. From the, it's not going to be Seth Rollins. From the Bloodline storyline? It, it, you got to keep him away. It's going to be at least towards Royal Rumble time, if anything. I think the next chapter for Cody's story might be a returning superstar. I think that person is going to be Bray Wyatt. That's why I think it's going to be the next chapter. That'd be good. Yeah. That'd be the next chapter. Something it's, big. You have, to, you have to do everything... To keep Brock or Cody away from Seth Rollins. He uh, wins and Bray comes Raider out now. in in old Bray, not this. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah, not this, yeah, yeah. We're talking about not the Uncle cult of Bray. Yes, yes. we're here. Well, yeah, I'm here. Not Uncle <laughs> Howdy. Fucking yeah. not fiend. Play the mind games. Play the mind games. Scare the shit out of Cody. Come back with Big Red. Ooh, and Braun. And well, Braun can't. Braun's in a yeah, he's, wheelchair. No, yeah, he's here. No, oh, he already, no, he already he neck. had neck surgery. Oh, neck, yeah. Yeah. Oh, put the mask on. Can't see your your brace. You be all right. Come on with his brother. I mean, his brother and Big Red. Why oh, you just get another big dude? Nah, he, he, uh, Brody, Shanky. What's he doing? Oh, jeez. Ding 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 ding. All right, but yeah, Cody, okay. Cody all the way. Cody, Cody, Cody. USA all the way. Hey, hey yo. All right, now your main events. You know, I'm looking forward to this one. You have tribal combats, which means... Nothing. Tribal combats! You will become dun, 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 the dun, dun, undisputed dun, 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 universal dun, dun. champion, and you will become the tribal chief. You have the one, Jay Uso, and you have your tribal chief, Roman Reigns. John, Yo. who do you got? Well, I mean, it's Jey Uso as a tribal chief and uh, champion. Long, long title they have nowadays. Um, the you know, I, I I did watch SmackDown earlier today, and you know, Jey Uso main event. Jey Uso getting a great reception, and he's really got the fans in the palm of his hands, and that's great. You know, it's great to build up a challenger, and they've done that throughout Roman Reigns' uh, championship run, and. And especially with, you know, a family member, a member of the bloodline. Um, but it's just, it's not going to happen. Um, uh, what will happen? I don't know. It just seems very pedestrian in a way. Roman Reigns is going to run roughshod over uh, Jey Uso with help from Solo. That's what we expect to happen. And is there something wrong with having predictability in wrestling? Not necessarily. 
predictability means it's logical and it makes sense. And that's what that's what will happen. And that's what will happen. Roman Reigns retains over Jey Uso after typical Roman Reigns title match shenanigans involving Solo Sequoia. All right. Abel? Uncle Ray? Uncle Abel? Ray? Whoever want to go next? I think since John gave me a scenario in my head and I'm a booker in my head. Sponsored by Bud Light Lime. Ray? I think that um, <laughs> Roman retains... With the Jimmy turn. No. No. I see that. Now so you have Jimmy and now you have Jimmy and Jay on a collision course, right? I and that, that takes care of them. Because Jay loses then what? What what happens then? He goes after what? It back, doesn't back to the tag titles? No, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Jimmy turns on and says, Hey listen, yeah, I want it no, I'm supposed to be the tribal chief. You it's always been he did the whole spiel when he said, "You're out. I am too." You know what I mean? Uh, he he gave him the he gave him like it's always been you. That that helped. maybe it's one of those. It's maybe it's that, and now it's Jay, needing help maybe from a a, a a Sammy and a Kevin because we have to we have to clue them somewhere back in, like all right now it's them three with them three. You know what I mean? And Jay has always been a, uh, the supporter of... Uh, wasn't a supporter of Sammy in the beginning, then it was supporter of Sammy in the end. It just makes sense. Maybe, so that's my thinking where Jimmy comes in and boom, it's, it's the turn. And now you have Jimmy. And then that's when Roman says, hey, Jimmy, you were going to be the next one. It was always you type of thing. And plants that in his head as a manipulative type of thing. You know what I mean? Then you have them three versus them three. Now you're making Sammy and Kevin back into the fold. You it just it just makes perfect sense because if Jay loses, then what? He keeps trying, and then you just wait for for Cody to win the Rumble again. No, it just it it, it, it stalls it. Here it extends it for a, you can go so many ways with it. You know what I mean? You gotta have Jay ha can't to hit the Jimmy. He has to go through Solo first. You know what I mean? It's just it makes sense, and you could elongate it. That's what I see. You guys agree with me? Because I was freaking awesome. You want to go or you want me to go? <laughs> I let screwed him up. Yeah. <laughs> I messed up your uh, brain, yeah. old no. boy. No, but I got a different scenario. But go ahead, Don. I was going to say, Roman's retaining. Mm -hmm. And I do see Jimmy Uso interfering. It's going to be a distraction. Because... Yeah, I might have been prom prince, prom king, whatever, but nah, it's about us. We the Usos. We came here together, and I'm not going to let you overshadow me. You might got a higher rate of me in WWE 2K23, but no, that don't mean nothing. I think the bloodline, bloodline is simply imploding, and it's going to start with the Usos. Yep. It's going to start because they both want to do this singles thing. Obviously, everybody know that Jay is better than Jimmy. Yep. So it's bound to happen, and the best time for them to fight is to drag that shit out to WrestleMania in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Where he kind of helps, but it messes it up, and so he doesn't help. Uh, the no. city of brotherly love drag that shit out. No, no I'm not going to fight my brother, just like when Brett said to, to, to Owen. Owen Hart. All right, Kane's, uh, I'm going to take a shot of that too. Yeah. I'm not going to fight my brother. And then Drag they, that shit out. Force the hand. And that's drag it. that shit out. Dom, you, you and me thinking the same. Man, you still got Solo. Way. He is he is the future tribal chief. Solo. The fear that Roman Reigns has when that man looks at him, when he even bumps next shoulder to shoulder, that is your tribal chief right there in the making. Just, I just don't know when's going to take place. That's the thing. That, I'm, I'm conflicted because I'm like, all right, so you got... I'm telling you, it, WrestleMania is going to approach, but everybody's thinking it's going to be Cody and uh, and um, it's Roman. Gonna, it's it's, it's going to be, be Cody, it, it's gonna or be, is it going to be a triple threat? No, no. Not, Solo it, it, is two storylines in the one. Like I said, like I said in the Both. previous podcast before, Solo is going to be the reason Roman has that title taken off of him. All right, I don't need that belt, That's but I that. want to be the tribal chief. <laughs> <laughs> Took your idea? I Take said that. that. No, I, told you that. I said that live from the Harpin Dragon. No, I said, I said what's the reason why Solo? I'm Russell. <laughs> why Roman Reigns gonna lose Taz and become Solo? So I, yeah, we're gonna be right. the Paul Heyman. Can we have the producer have roll the tape back from uh, week <laughs> week ten? Or I broke week, my, yeah, it don't matter. I, I One of us said it, but man, it don't matter. 
Okay. Well, I, I know that's exactly what I've been thinking now. I think mine sounds just better. Just the scenario just says it all. Like, it seems like you guys said the same thing I did, just... No. You said Jimmy interfered. Jimmy costs... Jimmy's going to cost... Yeah, Jimmy's going to be the reason why Jay loses. How? But in He's going to interfere. How? He can accidentally super kick Roman, which... And miss so and hit Jay with no. a nah. It was a oops. I don't. My bad. I, th- I think it's gonna be okay. a. It's not gonna be a oops. It's gonna be like no. You're not gonna be better than me. So he turns. So you agree he with fought. me? He turns. Yes. So you don't agree with him. You agree with me. I be agree on my with side. You on that. Look at me. On one thing. Acknowledge me. Look I don't me. see no Kevin Owens and uh, Sami Zayn in the picture. That they done. No. Let yeah. That, that, that be, is. What that should be. What's that? No Sami Zayn. No Kevin Owens. No. I'm just saying if that's the route they have to take, where you have them three now. Jay's gonna need allies. He, I mean, he's not. What's he gonna do? Hey, Cody, can you go to SmackDown real fast? Hey, no. He's you don't have the guys that can go there. You the one, him. right? Remember? You the one. You made event Jay Uso. You good? Roman room Jew. He, 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 he got the edge and the DUI. He, he, he called? good. Back. New day comes back. Hindu <laughs> share. Oh. oh. I, yo, that'll go crazy. Even though it doesn't make zero sense, so I'll just go nuts just because I just to hear that well, again. The Usos and the New Day have that history, so they would back them up in a, in a pinch. That's a clip, sure. bro. Uh-huh. But I think they have a, also. I think they have a battle royal at SummerSlam, which it really doesn't. Is that gonna happen on SmackDown? It. Oh, who knows? It really doesn't matter. Yeah. But other than that, Otis wins. What about L A Knight? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Can't Charles forget Reed about him. Down. Yo, he is a wild card, man. Oh, my God. Did you, did is he you, a heel? Is he not? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He, he, he had, is over. He had a tremendous segment on SmackDown, facing off against uh, uh, Shanti the Adonis. The cr- it was lit. I mean, it was, it, was, it was like a squash match with a little more competitiveness to it. I heard he said something about was, B-Fab. The like, crowd was hot for it. The crowd shit. was hot be- before it, after, and during. So, yeah. Yeah, let's get uh, the rocket strap on LA Knight. Oh, there we go. Let's get the strap. The rocket strap. I'm right here. <laughs> LA Knight. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Diet uh, Pepsi. It's the right one, baby. All right. Let's get into today's topic. I want to talk about one of the hottest SummerSlams of all time. I want to talk about SummerSlam 2002 that took place in Long Island, New York. Nassau. This is the first SummerSlam that is under the WWE brand. The F is gone, the E is in, get and the they got F the out. brand split. And I'm going to... Don, we were there for that first show where they got the F out, weren't we? I think my first one was, what was it, Mohegan or Hartford? One of them shit. Where, where it said, where it actually said on the ticket, yeah, get yeah. the F out. Yep. It actually said it on the Actual ticket. Actual ticket stubs. Don't yeah. even come. I was so confused, I was like... I think they messed up. Look, it says WWE. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Stupid <movie. laughs> All right, so we're going to take you down memory lane back to 2002, 21 years ago. 22 years ago? Don't what age fucking me, year we please. <laughs> Anyways, Stone Cold, he's not there. This what? man, he took his ball and he went home. What? Hey, the man they want to put the next big thing, Brock Lesnar, over. Yeah. Brock, Brock was hot. And it is what it is. And also, in this show, they had 18 wrestlers on this show. 15 of them were world champions. Oh. If you all didn't know so that. I'm, I'm, just dro- I'm just dropping. How many are dead? I'm dropping knowledge. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. some dead ones in there. How many are Hall of Famers? Yeah. I didn't look that up because well, it we, doesn't matter. All well, champions. you'll know as soon as you say the names. No, all of them are not Hall of Famers not in this damn show. Just about. Just Yeah, you pretty much. Brock is going to be there. You know who we'll, we'll get there. You know who's yeah. not the world champion? Someone un American. Oh. Right, let's go down the ah. car, Tom. What we got going on? Ah. So, our first match for SummerSlam 2002, it kicked off with the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle and Rey Mysterio. Who's that jumping out the sky? R E Y Mysterio. Kurt was standing right there at the ropes waiting for Rey. Rey came from behind and he attacked him. The match was amazing. Rey. Mm-hmm. 21 years later, he still looks the same, minus the concussion he suffered on SmackDown. He yo, he looked amazing. And the finish to that match was 
He went for a hurricanrana off the top rope. Angle caught him in midair, put the ankle lock on him. Yeah. And, the famous, and the famous Milkman um, singlet. Oh, I was gonna yeah, say, she had yes. the random white. Yeah, the milkman. The, yeah, the yeah, random white. That shit was yeah. good, man. I, I thought Kurt Angle just came from the hospital volunteering mm-hmm. as a candy striper myself. <laughs> but yeah, that was a good match to kick off the show, man. Mm-hmm. Hall of Fame worthy so, match. Before, uh, not to switch, it, but you guys think this is your favorite SummerSlam of all time? This is your, this is the best SummerSlam in your eyes. This is rated as one of the top. You want to ask that after the show? After we go through the card? <laughs> I, think, no, okay. I think it's one of the top. Yeah, that's okay. that's why we're covering yeah, it. It's, it's one of the top ones. Yes. Great match. Right finish. A break. Yeah. It's the right, right finish. finish. From the right Gay guy. Gay guy. <laughs> Kurt beat that little boy's ass. Because I like playing I like play with little boys. I was going to do uh, What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold I'm on. I'm going to mute all of us and just have you say that. <laughs> <laughs> AI. Oh, Lord. The second match at SummerSlam. The second match, you had the GOAT, Ric Flair, versus the other GOAT. Of present day, <laughs> yeah. Chris Jericho. Oh man! At this time, <laughs> Ric Flair was fifty-two year, fifty-two years old. Ooh. He was lacking confidence, but Jericho, who we know who's gonna be one of the top stars, had Ric Flair look amazing doing what he does. Who said it? Remember, you're Ric Flair. Who said that? Triple H. Triple H. You're fucking yes. Ric Flair. You're, you're, you're Rick, fucking Ric Flair. Rick Flair. Triple H said the it. Fuck? And Tinker you fight guys it. like that. You're Ric Flair. He made him look good. He gave him the confidence again. Yes. It was a good ass match. Flair hit all his spots. Obviously, actually, Flair got the win because yeah, Jericho Flair bumped Charles Robinson and then Ric Flair went old school. Boom! Bing! Low blow, figure four, tap out. That's Let's it. Raise a thousand. <laughs> that's it. It was a decent match for Ric Flair. He looked pretty good. Jericho took care of him, and that's it. And you know what the crazy thing is? Chris Jericho is 52 years old right now. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Jericho's I, still I, won the gold. Are you kidding me or what? I just don't like him. That man. is something. That's that's selfish. Something. That's another thing. I just. Why don't you like him, Ray? Yeah, Ray. No, we'll, Why don't we'll you get like to. Him? I'll get to it after, but nah. No, nah, because we're talking about Jericho now, so. Uh, he, he's just trying too hard for me. He's just, what's what's he trying? He's forced right now. What's he forcing? He, like he's trying to like it's like one of those guys that that are too old but trying to be with the end crowd and. It just looks He's awkward. trying to make. He's got a young fucking company. He's trying to build up. He's elevating. He, he just changes, no changes his shit. He don't have to, but he have. wants to. It's for the love of wrestling. It just. It's, but that's what the old. It doesn't matter. Should do. It, it seems it's forced. Right? Would you rather him be the champion and then like never give the belt up? No, it, right now he don't need the belt. He needed the, the belt in the beginning. Be I know that. Forced. At least he's the champion right now. No. It just seems like it's it's forced. If Jericho's and, the champ now, that's forcing it even more. And what about Sting? Sting does the same thing every Sting damn match. Sting is throwing himself off the seven-story windows, it's man, for no Sting. reason. Every damn match. What is he doing? Every he's damn match. But at least he's not, he doesn't have an appreciation society. It just, it just seems forced. We appreciate just, everything Sting does, though. Yeah, we appreciate, not, not, nothing is Sting, but he does the same it, thing it, every it, week. It, it just, he's always in a tag team tornado he's match. Those, he does he's some shit guys, like that. Oh, it's cool? I'm going to I'm gonna stick my fangs in that, and I'm just going to dry it out. All right, what, what's wrong with that? He's he doing Force. Hey man, he... as a viewer, person. Like, all right, let me do this. My opinion is just it doesn't work. It just it's like it doesn't uh, matter. I know. As a diehard wrestling <laughs> fan, that's why you feel the way you do. Yes. But to a casual wrestling fan, oh shit, that's Chris Jericho. Let me see what he's doing. That's how they draw them people in. Yeah, yeah. but none of them have 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 gotten super over because of the rub of Jericho and that whole appreciation society. Who has gotten like wow? Sammy. I don't Sammy think, was Sammy. Sammy. I don't think that's Jericho's Sammy. fault, but that's no. not Jericho's fault. Yeah, Jericho has more personality on them dudes. Jericho, Jericho has given like... his stamp to these guys, and yes. they've gotten to a higher level because of Jericho. Look at but the follow-up is not there. Who you, know? you think has benefits from being in this appreciation society? And don't say Sammy, because Sammy was always going to be what Sammy. What about Daniel Garcia? He sucks. He's good no, wrestler. He's, he's a great he's wrestler. He's a good wrestler. Dan- or entertainer. He just did a whole Rikishi bit. For no reason, in the middle of a match. Oh, well. He's he had an a disco inter- ball in there. So they knew that this this dance thing was going to happen. They just happened to have a disco hey. ball. I, if I go to Hartford tonight, if I don't see a disco ball in the middle of Hartford uh, XL Center, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. It's a work, Great, not everything's got to be a fucking He's an entertainer. Track on me. You're a cornet, says. I'm a cult of cornet guy. So were you why. upset back in the day on Monday Night Raw when they announced randomly... A cage match. Oh, what do you know? Is up in the ceiling. Yeah, yeah because Vince said, "Hey, I'm having a cage match." 
Put the cage up just in case. It's, it's all work, man. It's all pretty I just, it's fine. But a cage match and a disco ball is two different things. Yeah. The like same damn thing. Wrestling it's just is playing though. It's, it's pretty playing. You don't have really a disco ball match. Disco Inferno could have been in the building. Yeah. No, disco in here. Use the disco ball instead. Yep. You know, whatever. I, it, the lights and all that. Yeah. They, all they did. Do, do. They missed the worm. That's all they missed. You gotta remember, wrestling is a circus. You're gonna have your comedy. You're gonna have your line tamers. Your main event. Yeah, but don't do it with the freaking the champion of your whole company. That's Ooh. how I see it. Well, that's neither here or there. <laughs> because it wasn't. MJF <laughs> no, was part of it. Oh, MJF? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Like Adam Cole yeah. dance moves? Yeah, they're doing that, that. Oh, that. You guys don't understand how much that pissed me off. Well, I actually fast forward it pissed me <laughs> off so bad. You have your champion. All right, let's go. Let's do the summers. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm come on, man. That's any, any more talk about Jericho <laughs> and Ric Flair before I get to the next match? Anything you want to say? The GOAT. Two next. Goats. All right. This match I look forward to. It was a good ass match. One of my favorite type of you know wrestling top <clears throat> style match. Yeah, Edge versus Eddie Guerrero. Yes. Both guys at that time in 2002, they were on point. I'm not sure if it was before or like afterwards. When did Edge break his neck? Was it 2001, 2002? 2000. That was before. Yeah. It's before. So he didn't wear the necklace after. All right. So, SmackDown was loaded with these up-and-coming wrestlers, and SmackDown was the shit. Yeah, it was, it was one of my favorite matches of the night. That's just my style. They both had their hot spots. Edge got the spear, got the win, which he needed more than Eddie at that time. Yeah. I think because he was younger than uh, Eddie Guerrero. Because they were part of that SmackDown 6, too, right? Yeah. Those, those two guys that helped build up that SmackDown show to where it was, where they were beating Raw on... On a weekly basis, it was Kurt, Eddie, Edge, background, Cena. I want to say. Don't forget my man. Don't forget him. Chris Benoit. There you go. And oh, why is it so huge? I don't know. Oh. The la- I forget the last one, but it there you go with JBL. Ra- oh, J- yeah, JBL yeah, JBL or Eddie JBL. or uh, Jeff Jeff Mysterio. JBL. Yeah, those those six guys made SmackDown where it was, and he also got. Paul Heyman running the show back there. So talking about the SmackDown Mount Rushmore, there be a lot of guys on that one. Yeah. And it's crazy. That's they was getting pissed good. off because SmackDown was winning, had yeah. better viewers than uh the Raw. Yeah. yeah, yeah. SmackDown's good. Let's take the, their talent that's making them so good, and then SmackDown is left to rebuild themselves. That's and the history of SmackDown. And still all. killing it. Nobody care about Lance Murdoch and Trevor Cade or now White SmackDown Trump. is still better than Raw. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Seriously, because it. it's the Rock's show, the most electrifying show in all entertainment. My dad, because I'm the pebble. Oh, you look like a pebble. Yeah. I know that's what I just said. Put your hat back on. Okay, ricochet. <laughs> all right, our next match is for the heavyweight tag titles. Is Booker T and Goldust versus the Un Americans? Which is Christian and Lance Storm. Wasn't a fan of this match at all. A match that got lost in history. Gold yes, dust. Man. Thank God. He got his ass when Booker Close came man. in with the hot tag. <laughs> Booker looked pretty good with the hot tag. I knew he had potential. Listen, those two guys were comedy gold, man. You, I would just, it didn't matter what I was doing. As soon as I seen those two on TV, I'm stopping what I'm doing. I'm just going to watch and see what they, they're doing. Nip, nip, nip. Nickelodeon. <laughs> Let me get it. He looked at him like, what were you about to say? <laughs> that was hilarious. Like, he was like, me and Nick, Nick, Nick. Don't say <laughs> it. But he looked at him like, you better not say it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they were hey, I like when what, they were both in the bed with the chick. <laughs> hey, what the hell, man? <laughs> Booker with the whitey tighties. <laughs> I'll let you. How did that come about again? Where he started getting the old. The, no, uh, he he got uh, electrocuted. Yeah. <laughs> Something backstage. He fucking <laughs> storyline wise. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the evolution just shoved him into like an uh, electrical box or something. Yeah. You know. And Booker, I'll let you take a sip of my Slurpee, and I'll let you take a bite of my big. Juicy Wiener. Vin <laughs> Balvoski says. What the hell, man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Freak. Freak. Do you guys like this match? 
Nah, it was just it was, it, was, it was just a it was just a placement just, match. Yeah, that's that's all it was. It was just un Americans got the win with Test interfering and yeah. that was that. Test. Test. Were you a testicle? No. I have them. Weren't we all? Still. Like, <laughs> the way you asked that was <laughs> Hey man! You a testicle? <laughs> or no? <laughs> Weren't you? No, I was a big fan of test. Uh, and but they just dropped the ball. With, uh, <laughs> hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, look at my square. Who am I? Test it. Yep. <laughs> oh, Might want to get that checked out, my friend. I know. All right, our next match we had the Rabbit Wolverine Chris Benoit versus the whole effing show Rob Van Dam. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the backstory on this match right here yes. is for the IC title. Chris Benoit was the Intercontinental Champion, but he jumped ship and went to SmackDown. Rob Van Dam wanted him and Eric Bischoff wanted the IC title back to bring back the Monday Nights, and man, that was a solid match, man. Hey, you know what made me mad about this match, though? No one seemed interested for a majority of it until the, almost the end, where they started when they caught when they started getting him back into it. They reeled him in because you see, it was a very Audience wise, flat mat. No one was reacting to anything that was going on. Of course, you'll get your RVD chance. You're gonna get that anywhere in the world. But then at the end, you see them start. Okay, it started. It started building. Like okay, they got us again. That's I thought that was how so good yeah. by those two. Because I was rewatching this and I was like, man, it, this crowd is just done with it. Something about the the end, na- that Nassau um, crowd, man. Sometimes they're what? just they was they was hot in the beginning. Our, uh, they, yeah. they, uh, yes. Beginning of the show. It was high. the un-American and all that other stuff. Yeah. yeah. But then, by the end of that match, the people were right back into it. it they they were. were back and forth. It the was, dudes it had was two different styles, but it just worked. It just yeah. played out. Chris, Chris is one of those guys, God rest his soul. Chris I mean, was a great God worker. God rest his soul? Yeah. I don't think God rest his soul, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't think, I, don't I think know. it's the wrong end. Hey, but <laughs> CTE and all that, you know. Yeah, but. Even Sucks. Like, nah, you gotta go down there with the rest of those guys. Yeah, I know. Was it hard for you to watch that match? No. It being Christmas Wild? I don't no. know how, why people have a hard I time watching. Man from, yes, from art. I, I'm one of those people that can separate the man from like the personal person. Yeah. Like he don't deserve to work. Like he, was, he was a great worker. I love our. I'm not gonna stop playing R. Kelly. Yeah, R. R. Kelly was a great artist. But it is what it is. Well, we lost some viewerships, but whatever. Okay. It doesn't matter. No, but yo, I, that was a very good. I, and I, I'm. Those two really put on a good match and got the crowd back into it for that. Yeah. Damn right. John, what you got to say about that? I, you know, um, <clears throat> I, I, just like anyway, anyone would have divisive thoughts on uh, watching Chris Benoit matches. Divisive? Oh. What devices? Word of the week. Divisive. Wait, divisive. Um, no. <laughs> not divisive. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you gotta you, if you watch a Chris Benoit match, yeah, he's one of the best wrestlers of all time. And, you know how uh, to pin it down, right? It's just, <laughs> it's just unfortunate what things that happened. Um, but hey, it's still you know it's still a good match. And uh, just because Benoit that all that happened, it, it shouldn't erase the chemistry he had with his opponents over history. So um, it turned out he was the most hardcore one. <laughs> I know every time I see him do a diving headbutt, I cringe. Like you just yeah. see, like no homo, like the way his head just bounce off the mat. It, yeah. it just, it's just yeah. crazy. Right yeah, now. just thinking about that. Having man. concussions myself, he I, was, it he was sucks. so good though, he man. He was good, man. I want to resemble like Benoit. He had the stature, man, for his size, man. Like, yeah, oh. he was so like like five ten. Was it five ten? Five ten, two twenty five. Dynamite kid. He was the dynamite kid. Yeah, you see how dynamite kid yeah. played out. Yeah. Same thing. Steroids. <laughs> well, not the same. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was fucked up, though. Yeah. It's sad. So sad. All right. Our next match. We have Tess versus the American badass, Big Evil, The Undertaker. This is a weird match that came out of nowhere. You know? It was nothing special. Sucked. Nothing. It, Undertaker it was, was just the world champion. It was yeah. long ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was terrible. Like, WWE, they had... High potential for Tess. They wanted to push this man to the moon, like and he couldn't do shows. nothing, man. It was, it was nothing. He had more attitude and edge when he shaved his hair and had pimples on his back. But the <laughs> hey guys, hey guys, look at me. What's oh, that all about? Somebody shaving their testicles? <laughs> <laughs> Can we 
just get some peace and quiet here on the It Doesn't Matter podcast. No. But the match Mine is the beautiful s- city of New London. Yeah, but the match is nothing special. They even had the Un-Americans, Christian and Lance Storm, come and interfere. And Undertaker still got the win with a um, devastating tombstone. Did and, he do, did he do that thing? Like nah. the video game before he did the tombstone? Nah, no, that was a regular yeah. tombstone. That was after, I want to say. After the match, he found the uh, American flag in the crowd, came up. Held it proud, got on the bike, All right. boom, that was I it. I am American Badass, watch me kick. I don't know the rest of the song, man. <laughs> All right. Speaking of, uh, speaking of kicks, uh-huh. we have an unsanctioned match between the Heartbreak Kid and Honk. Shawn Michaels and the game Hunter Hearst Hemsley. Here was the show, right? Oh, my God. Here this unsanctioned yes, match, oh, my God, this had... This was the art of storytelling right here. Yes. Here was the show right This here. shit built for four years. Shawn Michaels hurt his back in 1998 through a casket match. And he was out, came back. You dropped the ball. The, the reunion of DX. Up. They came back, and then all of a sudden, Triple H just took out his buddy in the backstage parking lot. It was you, Hunter. It was you all along. John? Yeah, this match was chosen as one of my memorable... Matches that made Shawn Michaels Mr. SummerSlam. And uh, it was a very big deal because Shawn Michaels was one of my top guys when I first started getting into wrestling. And, you know, he missed the entire Attitude Era, as he was very aware of oh, in later so, DX he's skits. so mad about so it. So mad. Yeah. Um, so, but at the time, it was great. And you didn't know he was going to keep going as a wrestler. He was just going, you know. So it was just a one-off. And so it was a very, very important match in SummerSlam history, a very important match in Shawn Michaels' career and Triple H's career, and the angle that led up to that match, where, you know, they they digitized, they had a, a scrambled footage, and they uh, cleaned it up, undigitized it, and it was Triple H uh, attacking Shawn Michaels in the parking lot or something like that. Uh, it was very well done. It was, so it was very yeah. well done, yeah. This was still Attitude Era at the end of it, right? This is yeah, it, it was towards the end of it because I yeah. think like oh three, that's when ruthless, ruthless aggression okay. took place. Because right. Cena wasn't there yet. Not yet. No. That's right. Like not really, yet. that's when the start of the ruthless aggression started. I, you say ruthless aggression, Cena pops in. I'm not gonna. Cena, like, Orton, that, Batista, Brock, yeah, Shelton, yeah. Charlie so, Haas, so Charlie basically, Haas, what we're seeing Russ. is WrestleMania 19 when um, Austin and Rock fell. That's attitude here done. Refresher. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'll be right Uh-oh. back. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm working on the set. Yeah. Quiet on the right. set. We got John leaving. John leaving. John needs Look, a refresher. But anyways, the match was amazing. It was stellar. Man, this dude. Hey, man. Yeah. Hit me. <laughs> Come on, man. It's Stone Cold. Right. Getting right. a Cobra Kai? You still got some. I'll show you. No. John said he needed a refresher. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's John, a first. Yeah, John would have called the first. You know, what I, in the flying fuck? I He's wanted to mention earlier that you know the crowd being dead, mostly Benoit and RVD during that match. Was, it has, it, uh, well, Benoit is definitely dead. <laughs> was because and they were hot in the beginning of the show. Is because it probably got really hot in that arena because SummerSlam kind of like it's getting really hot in this room during this podcast. So yes. Refreshments needed by the official beer of Yellowstone, Coors Banquet. Cut the check. Or Cobra Kai. Tell them to cut Cobra the check. Kai. Cut the Cobra check. Kai. Alright, fellas, back to this match. Yo, the place went nuts when Shawn Michaels came out in the entrance and yes. had the little uh, Jesus t shirt on and he was oh. doing his thing. He was doing his thing, man. But yo, that whole match, Triple H whooped his ass. Yes. And then just the selling of Shawn Michaels, the expressions, this, oh man, this. That was a good ass match, yeah. and then when he was tuning up the band, he missed. Triple yes. H tried to get the pedigree, <laughs> he missed, and Sean wanted to roll up. Oh my god, it was like a relief, like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, he kissed Earl Hebner. It was, it was something special, Great man. Match. Like yo, I, I forgot. I think that my man Paul Martinez crib. He ordered this shit. Summer Slam 2002. We watched it, and it was it was stellar. I think the only thing I didn't like about this match, only thing, and that's me just being a Critic is just Sean didn't come out with his natural attire, uh, and and people liked it oh, because he came Brown? out for a fight. Yeah, yeah, it was a fight. Action. Triple H came he out in his trunks. Real wrestling, yeah. but with him returning, just the nostalgia me wanted oh, yeah. to see Sean again. I wanted to see the oh you got the, Sean, I wanted to but... see the I wanted to see the heart with the with the break in it. I wanted to see the 
the long hair. I wanted to see the, the, the wristband. The, the wristband. Well, I wanted to see this Shawn supposed, it's, Michaels. It's supposed to be a one-off. That Even was the when thing. he was in that elimination chamber, it pissed me off because he had the little short little... The Dutch like, boy the, haircut. He had the little bob. Yeah. I was like, this is not Shawn. I want to see Shawn. Like... That Sean, I wanted to see Sean nah, Michaels. Man. Different man. He, he was saved. He, yeah, but that's the only thing. But that's this match, thing. I agree with you, was it was stellar. this made? This is why you, probably people think that this was a great SummerSlam because of that. Well, for me, just the card alone, yeah. it's pretty stellar. Besides the un Americans, you didn't even get to the main event yet. Yeah, besides it better than this one. Though. No, 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 no. because this. this this is more of a story. Right. Our yeah. next match. You, yeah, well, you and me talked about the art of storytelling about this. This is exactly how this our... This is it. If we were to well, ever have a title... To their any, credit, they've been doing this with, even when it comes for Sean and Undertaker, then Triple yeah. H and Undertaker. There was he, always a story behind it. But you, you gotta remember, I mean? he's been... He has not touched the ring in four fucking... Four and a half, five years. Well, that's a lie, because he was training. He had his own school. Uh, sure. was and, a guy, he, he, and he was in a couple indies. Brian you know, couple Danielson. A indie, couple indie shows. Yeah, so he, he was still... He was still in the ring. He was still active, but he wasn't. But he wasn't. No, he no wasn't match, under, No camera. He didn't have the cameras, or he didn't have the fucking crowd like Sean he did. freaking Michaels. I know. It's, and, and I'm it's such a bottom. Okay. I'm I'm such a Brett fan, but man, I don't think he could have pulled that off. I don't know. He had strokes. Freaking and I, Brett Hart. I love have, Brett, but don't damn. do that. It's Brett freaking Hart in the dungeon. Anybody that came from a dungeon can take twenty years off and come back and still do what they do. Except for Tyson Kidd. Yeah. Twenty years off their life, Chris Benoit. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson Kidd permanently <laughs> Kaiser permanently how's well, Natty doing Tyson Kidd is, uh, he's he brought up the whole women's division by himself no that was Finley someone ended his career who did it Viumanese Joe <laughs> John <laughs> that is got that oriental heat the oriental bring, heat bring in the O IDM hot sauce coming soon <laughs> Chili's peanut. made in Mexico peanut chaw there's a lot of International things get thrown out. Right <laughs> What's wrong with that? We going worldwide. Worldwide? Yo. IDM. New Zealand. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think they follow the IDM pod as well. Grayson Walla. Before we get to our main event, we need all you guys who's on our Facebook page for our next watch along. We want you guys to vote between SummerSlam 1998. That is with Triple H and The Rock. This motherfucker dropping his phone in the background in a ladder match. And you have Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Undertaker. Or we're going to do, was it Road Wild, Hog Wild? Was it Road Wild? Road Wild. Road Wild, 1999. You got Dennis Rodman versus, was it Macho Man, Randy Savage? Ooh, and you yeah. got, I'm not sure if he's black or white, but Hulk Hogan versus Kevin Nash for the World Heavyweight Championship. And then we got TNA Slam Anniversary. Slam Anniversary? TNA Hardcore, hardcore justice. justice. God damn. Like, damn TNA. Three Nobody. options. Nobody's going for TNA, but it's RVD and Sabu. What's that about? Yeah. RVD and Sabu. <laughs> well, Who'd Jerry Lynn fight? Oh. We'll barber. find out. Anyways, <laughs> vote, guys. Follow us on Twitter, IDMPod23. Follow us on Facebook, It Doesn't Matter Podcast. Follow us on the Rhode Island Broadcast Network. Follow us on any platform. We're going to bring you content every week. We're going to keep bringing it to you. Yeah. But, all right, let's get back to our main events. 2002 main event of SummerSlam was the most electrifying man in all entertainment. The Rock versus the next big thing, Brock Lesnar. Ah, man, this is Brock's rookie year. The Rock at this time is 30 years old. Is he? Brock Lesnar at this time is 25 years old. Oof. You got your future right the, there. Right. You got your, you got your, well, I don't want to say the past because the Brock was only in the league for like no, he was five in years, no, five, six years. Yeah, prime, he, was, he, was in his, yeah he was in his prime, prime rate. Prime Rock. Ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, hold, on hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, the rock. Yeah, he he was in his prime, but but when he came back in like 2011, this man he he didn't lose a beat, man. Yeah, yeah but that's, we're right. talking about prime rock. Where with the this was the great one. This we, yeah, we're not we're not talking rock. about which year we. Nah, the rock. I'm just no, saying I'm Hollywood just, rock. We're talking about prime rock. I know. Rock, rock yeah, rock, rock is one of those guys that not. Was, so you Hollywood so rock. you talking rock. about not Hollywood, but you talking about after the nation before yep. Hollywood rock. The, the corporate. The, 
he's prime rock. Yeah, right here. This is because this, this is Scorpion King rock. That, yeah, right here. prime rock. Prime rock. <sighs> rock was the man, boy. That was yeah. my guy. That was my guy. Yo, if he didn't have to go to Hollywood, ooh. <laughs> Abel needs questions. If he, I will say if he that, didn't get injured, I'm always gonna say it. If he didn't go to Hollywood, yep. what would have happened? I'll be the only one saying it. If he didn't go to Hollywood, he'd be the Miz. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Take a swing. No. Abel so, said, "Hell no." Yeah, we're gonna stop disrespecting the Miz like either because he's been in this thing no, that, for a long that time. That man could sell his thing. Miz, I give him that. He ain't got a hot wife. Guys. He, he, he could sell. That's why. Single week for the rest of his career, Miz is and good. he could come back and just have that match where he just wins, and, and we're gonna be like, "Damn, the Miz just won!" Like he's he's that guy. Yeah, he's, Miz is money. Yeah. I was a big Miz fan, especially when he won the title. everything for that company, man. Yes. Yeah, well, even when he first won the belt. If they don't like, have what? a statue of him in Stanford, they're... Yeah, he, he should be... Would you put him in the as a headliner? For what? Like in the Hall of Fame down the road? <laughs> Depends what names you put in there. I know, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I know. But when you think of like headliners, you know, you think Driver of specific James names. Driver Dudley. Goldberg. The Rock. Stone Cold Steve Austin. The oh, Miz. The Miz. Yeah. It, 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 it all depends. It depends. Yes, yeah, it's it the class. Whenever they have WrestleMania in Cleveland or Hollywood. Him and Dolph. If Please. they ever get a WrestleMania in Cleveland, that's going to be the worst WrestleMania. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. That's, that's Minneapolis. Cleveland sucks. <laughs> Minneapolis. Oh. What is with you in Minneapolis? You don't like it? Have you been in Minneapolis? Yes, oh. I haven't. <laughs> I have. It's ain't nothing. I have. Uh, oh, yeah. Have uh, uh, gone. Uh, Rhea. Went to WCW episode one. Yeah, I was there. He was there. It's on the IG page. It doesn't but, matter. But podcast yeah, but page. this is Prime Rock. Brock rookie. Yeah, but Rock the, the, rookie the Rock. The Rock came out to to booze. They booed him because they knew because social media was getting hot back then. The yeah. internet was getting hot. Excuse me, not social media, Elon but Musk. Say, what the f- but he was a uh, he's about to leave. He's about to go back to Hollywood. High Five was going crazy. <laughs> what the restaurant? Friendster. Well, I think in the restaurant. I'm saying we're open there. You know, you know we're on a High Five. High Five was great. Anyways. So High Five. Boom. <laughs> but anyways, everybody knew the Rock was leaving, yeah. and Brock. It was a good match, but it was just a great moment. The Rock passed the torch to the next big thing, Brock Lesnar, because 21 years later. What is Brock doing? Still right there. Still whooping ass. Still Mr. He's still doing his thing. The double nip up with Rock. The Rock's facial on that was everything. Like, how is this big motherfucker? Like, he looked at him like the nerve in you. Like, it, it Brock, was. You it gotta was awesome. remember, at this time, Brock awesome. is like what six four three and some change. No, he's two sixty five. Nah, Easy. six five, now six five two sixty five at yeah. that time. At yeah. that time, I thought it was like three. No, he's not. He's a big motherfucker. 65, 265. Rock is not breaking three hundred. Big motherfuckers. Well, we're talking about like no, the way he nip like it, it looked at like, that. That was the best part of, for me. Just my opinion. Just the best part is the the facial of it. Like, all right, I'm dealing yeah. with something that's not right. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, that's a heavyweight moving like a cruiserweight. Yeah, and there's Brock no. Brock just moves so damn yeah. fast for yeah. his size. Cool, Ray, right, in the. Our Mr. Epi- uh, Mr. SummerSlam episode, I said that Brock, if you want to see the evolution of Brock Lesnar, I said watch him at SummerSlams. How this match right here, you know, he's a pure wrestler. And then over the years, how he came to the MMA the ass fighter, kicker. the ass kicker, Suplex City. John you Cena. see the evolution of John Brock. Cena's a- That's what Suplex City came about. Yes. Right? Yeah. Suplex yes. City, bitch. Yes. Right 16 up. minute match. 16 of ass whooping. 16 uh, suplexes. Ass whooping. This is where it happened. If you want to see the evolution of Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar is Mr. Summer. Now, this goes back this to my Cody doing. thing. Where, uh, well, yeah, but that's why I think it flips on his head. But, yeah, that ma- this match was it was good. It wasn't as good. But to have those back-to-back was wild. Yeah. Wow. So, all those things in consideration makes SummerSlam 2002 one of the top SummerSlams of all time. Ray? Mid. <laughs> I don't know how it's mid. I, you. No, no. Okay. I think it's three. In my, okay. in my list. In three my out personal of five. list. Middle of top three. five. Top two? Three out of five or what? Okay. okay. It's number That's three. Fine. It's number That's three. Fine. Okay. I'll take that. Number three. What's number one? I, I like 2013. I just did. 
I just like the little bit. We'll probably have to go back and watch that. Daniel Bryan, just the whole the whole story oh, there. Yeah. I just liked it. No, just... Number two? 98? <sighs> Brett, Brett Bulldog. 92. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking 92. about that. We'll be talking about that in the next few that's weeks. With just the, the build of it with the family there, the... The atmosphere. The whole show? Just, but that's just... Yeah. You know, well, I, I, I just like... Maybe it's the nostalgia for me. Well, yeah. Maybe it's that what it is where it's, it's just... Le- it's legendary. old school SummerSlam. You know what I mean? It just felt good for me. Yeah, well... That just is- me being someone that loves wrestling from that long. Mo- but- this modern is great. And they were good. And their athletes are way better. But just the nostalgia, just the way it was presented was awesome. And then when Bulldog won the shot of the whole... Freaking Wembley Stadium going nuts. It's just, that's what did it for me as a fan. That's what did it for me. That's, I don't care if it was Hacksaw in the beginning of the match. Oh, uh, the damn. If I'm, if I'm right, I might be wrong. But Undertaker, sure Kamala, was, I think it was, casket yeah. match, right? But no, it was something like that. And that, that, that match was actually pretty good. Kamala get, doesn't get credit he deserves. No, he but, uh, just, I don't know. That's, that was it for me. But I just like the Daniel Bryan thing, the people behind them, and just, it was it was something different than when he won the pop. Yes, could go as one of the biggest pops in forever. It just and then with Triple H, it's Randy Orton cashing in and everyone going from a high to what the what the fuck happened. You know what I mean? That's that's uh, what yeah. that's that was my <clears> thing. <throat> Leave you wanting more. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, the O two was third on my list. That's just all for right. me. It, it was a great show. The Hall of Famers all over the place, but. My opinion, just the way it made me feel. Yeah. That's, I don't know. Because when Daniel Bryan won, I don't give a damn who. We, we're all in this room. We, we all went nuts. nuts. We were together. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we watched there. that shit. We were there. Yeah. I was there. Hit Orton with that knee? Yep. We went nuts. He won. We no, Cena with the knee. Excuse me. Popped. Everyone was like, what? Was let's go yeah, finally. Yeah, we'll see, yeah. He did it. Yeah, he Orton did it. In. A freaking indie was just won. Was that, that high fives? No, nah, was that Tilly? Yeah. Yeah, I ordered it on Tilly. Tilly. Yeah, we I came downtown? I came in town for that? I was there. I remember I was with you. I'd already I, I, I had already left New we London was, for a we while. We was deep, so I don't know. I was I I definitely I know Ray was there. I, we I, watched that yeah, shit, yeah. I remember I jumped and, and I dude, to, what happened mine? Like yeah. <laughs> no, so th- for me that was just that was crazy. I know I came around well, yeah, for the IDE and pod. Yeah, I was I, out I, of town. I, 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 the O2 was great, but it's just I lived in mass at the time. I think it was saved by the last two matches. Yeah, I, I, I think what we're trying to do for this is just to, to see the pay-per-view as a whole because I agree with you. You know, the, the two things you said, you know, Bre- uh, Brett and Bulldog uh, was yeah. such was so tremendous. Story. It, 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 it yeah. took over SummerSlam 92. Brian and Cena and that whole thing took over 2013 because I can't remember all a single else thing on that show. Exactly. Now, for example, and for me, I mean, I'm not ranking them right now, but... I remember my, my one of my choices was SummerSlam 05, Hogan and Shawn Michaels. I mean, that had a that had a really great card as well. But that one match, it was on the DVD cover. Yep. It was, yeah. it, it's the o- thing I think the of most. The overselling. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so you can think of one match, and that kind of covers the entire pay per view. Like sometimes I do that with the guys, and there's like, oh, I remember one match, and then I'll rattle off the rest, and it's like I don't recall that. It's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's what happens. Sometimes that happens, you know, and. Uh, because yeah. I, this O2, when, when you guys first told me about the O2, I remember three right off the bat. The last two matches. The last matches. two, and I remember... Curtain Ray. I Curtin remember Curtain Ray. Yep. That was, that was it. I Do I remember... Did I remember the, the edge and... I, I want to say I probably you know, remember... A little bit. A little... Maybe a little bit, because I know Edge got the win. The Ric Flair and Jericho, I'm not going to be honest. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't Honestly, remember I don't remember that, that either. But <laughs> The, the just, Chris Benoit and the, the, the uh, RVD, yeah, I did remember Undertaker that. Undertaker Test, I still, I, I watched it and I don't remember it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't remembering it while I was watching it. <laughs> I think I was on my phone. But it's, you know, I just, I didn't like the American Badass thing. I just, it wasn't for me. But it, it Damn, testicles. Fucking weed whacker. <sighs> but yeah, so that's my thing with O2. But O2 was good. O2 mm-hmm. was all right. But all you know, fame, was, like I said, all the fame was all over the place. We know it was good. The show was good. Uh, real good show. It's good to have you here again, Cool Ray. John. Oh, cool Ray. Oh. Abel. Guys, Abel. Monday night, this coming Monday night, when this episode drops. No, tell them what we're doing tonight, Dom. 
Nobody cares. It's going to be over by now. I don't yeah. care. It's so cool. We're going to go see a ladder match with we're Andrade. Going to collision. We're going to Collision. Andrade People want to and know Buddy that we're Murphy. Together. We're actually together after the show. We're going to go go to watch Collision tonight. Yes, we're really friends. This isn't a work. <laughs> this, is, this is a shoot. We're going Right after this, we're, we're going to watch friends. AEW Collision. This is what we do. Yeah, we do. We love wrestling. We love it. That's right. We are four friends, four different personalities, same town, same gets, love, this guy one gets. love, professional that's, wrestling. That's, and that is the It Doesn't Matter podcast. And for myself, John, Ray, Abel, and Dom, we will see you next time. Boom!